Mark, you're the technical tutor here at the AMAC. What does AMAC stand for? It's the Advanced Manufacturing and Automation Centre. And at the Training 2000, correct? At Training 2000, yeah. Okay, so how many people do you actually have here as apprentices coming through this place? How does it all work? Well, yeah, we have we do numerous different apprenticeships. We cover engineering, main, nearly all aspects of engineering, automotive, dentistry. I was going to say, I noticed the dentist chair when I went up there. I wondered, what that, I wondered whether that was just something you made. <laughs> no, no, no. They, we, we do a full, there's a full apprenticeship offered in dentistry. So how many, how many apprentices so, or people would you have going through here in a year? So we have around about 1,500 to 2,000 going through Training 2000 every year. You've got two, two guys here, uh, Mark, that I've spoken to today that are taking part in World Skills. Uh, how well do you know those two? Uh, yeah, I know, well, I know all three of these guys that are here today that are in the World Skills final team. We took, yeah, we're going to talk to Jack and to Christian, who are on the turning side. Right. Yeah. So I'm the World Skills UK training manager for CNC Turning. So I've been working with them guys last week down at DMG, along with Chris Cooper, and I'm going to be working with them for the next 12 months to get them prepared for Russia in 2019. Uh, so so far, I've been in the national finals in the UK, uh, competing against three turners. Uh, two of which have gone into the squad UK for turning and three have gone into the milling from five. So that's narrowed the numbers down. Uh, now we're going into um, two years of training uh, to the finals. So at the minute we've had one week's worth of training, which is back to basics. Uh, and then we go through to our next block in April. So I'm now with Christian, who is going to be uh, the competitor to Jack next year in order to get to Russia for the World Skills competition. Uh, what's going to make you see off uh, Jack, Christian? What are you going to do better? Well, I'm hoping uh, more than anything it's going to be the training. I think we're going to have to look into the training. We've got a lot of training to do over the next over the next year, so we're going to be looking into, into the master cam, which is the, the cam technology behind it, as well as the machining side of it. So it's just getting my head around around that, really. And you're an apprentice at Fort Vale, which is a, a large manufacturer actually around this, around this area. Uh, how much time do they give you to learn this? Uh, well, I've been given, so far I've been given quite a lot of time, you know, to... to, to for the machining kind of side of it, as well as the cam side, and given time out of work to go away and, and, and look at different training facilities and areas that we can improve for the world skills. So how long have you actually been an apprentice at DMG Mori in the UK? Uh, I've been an apprentice at DMG Mori UK for just over a year. I joined last January. Um, so that's and, and, and you're going to be turning, yeah? So they split yes. this today, milling and turning, and you're on the turning side. Why have you, why have you chosen that? Uh, it's just what I enjoyed all the way through college. I enjoyed the manual. So you like part. round bits rather than square bits? Right, exactly, yeah. <laughs> And it's quite apt that we're standing here at Training 2000. We've got the DMG Mori machines behind us here. You couldn't really have much of a better company or better machines to kind of uh, learn your trade on, could you? No, exactly. They're one of the best. I mean, they've really pushed me forward as well for the world skills. Obviously, they they support the machines for the, both the Milan turn, and but they really pushed my training to go for the world skills. Then, so when you get when you actually get to Russia, what what's the drill? What do they do? Give you a piece of material, a selection of tools, and a machine. And a drawer and you go, there you go, uh, make this component. Is that how it works? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. So we get a machine which is completely empty, so an empty turret, an empty chuck, a set of jaws, your tooling which is already given for you, and, you, and a, a, piece of, a piece of material. Your drawing's given to you on the day and, and that's it. You just, you just left, left to go. And it basically, whoever does all of that the fastest is the winner, correct? Uh, not the fastest, the best to hit all the dimensions. So all the measurements, each job's out of 100 marks and whoever gets the best marks wins, basically. So what's at the end of it as well, Christian? I mean, let's say when you go head to head uh, in Russia, you win in 2019, what are you gonna get? What's the prize? I'd say apart from, from the medal and the uh, and your certificates, I'd say more it's, it's, it's the pride and the achievement of, of, winning, of winning the competition, really. I think that's a brilliant attitude to have, and I think it's great for the youth in UK manufacturing. I wish yourself, uh, Christian and Jack, equal success. Good luck. So it's good then, because you can probably tell me who's uh, who's best and who's going to win. I'm not allowed to do that, but even so, they're both exactly the same at the moment. What does this say about us uh, in the UK actually trying to get young people into manufacturing the World Skills event? Is it a, is it a big contribution? It, it, you've got to think about it. World Skills finals every two years. It's like the Olympics of apprenticeships. It's fantastic. You know, what, what an opportunity for these young apprentices have to be able to go and compete against the best in the world.